Welcome back to John T. Hoggard High School and Sheila Bowles Gymnasium. I'm Don Osterbo, and now joined by the coach, Webb Guthrie. How you doing, Webb? Hey, Don, always a pleasure to be here. I promised I'd give my daughter Bailey a special shout-out tonight. So, Bailey, I hope you're watching at home. I love you, and hope you're getting ready for bed soon. Looking forward to a good game tonight, Don. All right. And we've got the starters being announced for the Screaming Eagles who come in at 9-6, and 3-5 and five in the conference. And Mari Brown, number 42, number 20, Jalen Conway, the junior guard. Number 14, the junior all-around player, athlete, Kalani Harris. And number three, sophomore team scoring leader, Mikael Pocknett comes in at just under 18 points a game. And then his tag team partner, number 22, Khalil Jones, comes in at 11 and a half a game. And Coach Gulledge is, is really just looking to see his kids play a tough ball game and, and see if they can take, you know, right now the, the conference is Hanover, Hoggart, you know, West Brunswick still hanging in there with that getting the upset victory versus Hanover a couple few weeks ago and you know but right now Screaming Eagles come in and shake up some things if they get a victory tonight. Yeah play hard for sure I think he's got to have a really big game from some supporting cast tonight. Don I start Khalil Jones I think he's got to have a really strong game for them. I think Ashley just got to come in and establish a rhythm and really get their offense going get some guards moving get some scoring production out of somebody else other than Pocknett who's kind of led them all this year. Mm. Hoggard starters being announced. Hoggard there with Brady Rankin. Look for a big game to him. I think for Ashley with Rankin and Hedera, you really got to get them under control and not let them establish a rhythm. Once they do, Hoggard's really hard to beat. Yeah, both Rankin and Hedera have been having a successful season. Chris Gibbs, the junior forward, has some beef in the middle. And then the senior swingman plays forward center, Jackson Massey. And, you know, Brady Rankin coming in at 15 points a game. You know, it seems like he and Hedera, you know, trade off being the leading scorer for the Vikings. Yeah, you know, Hogger's going to be really patient in their half-court offense. Don, they run a lot of sets through Rankin and Hedera as well, and they're very patient in that. Ashley's really got to not let them get going because once they do, like I said, they really get their offense going, and they're hard to beat because they shoot at a high percentage. Athletically, Ashley matches up well with them. Look for a competitive game here. Look for how their energy is to start this game. I expect them to come out and play hard with a lot of energy to start. And a lot of the pace is going to be controlled by number two for the Vikings, their senior guard, Cam Blanks. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and Ashley really, I said last game, Don, really doesn't have a true point guard. they got to have some guard step up and really establish their offense for him. Wayne Merritt with the toss. He's joined by Matt Wall and Justin Robinson. It's our crew for the night. Pocknick. Hoggart comes out in the man-to-man. Pocknick drives baseline, spins to the middle. Nice little scoop shot. Brady Rankin, a threat from three. Good back door. Hedera with the runner. Pocknett again spins. And they call the travel. You know, I have to say this. We'll get it done and over with, but uh, just listening to the national anthem here t tonight. Uh, can't help but think about the, the sacrifice Antonio Moore did for our country. You know, he's a Hoggard alumni just recently being killed in Syria. And uh, I know that a lot of people probably had his, 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 his memory uh, on, their, on their minds. Yeah, Don, heart and prayers go out to that family and the entire community. You know, as a former veteran with what's going on, your heart just melts and goes out to the family and wish the best for everybody involved. And so, Mikkel Pocknick. Gets the Screaming Eagles up by two baskets. Shout out to all the young men over there sacrificing for our country, Don. 
Certainly, and thank you for your service. Gibbs, two air balls on the hoggard end. Pocknett. Conway, ball knocked out, blocked by Brady Rankin. Look for Hoggard to be patient on this set. Rankin off on the set shot. That's something I've got to re Ashley really has to do a good job rebounding tonight. You see Hoggard get that offensive rebound. I think that's one game in the rebounding game Ashley has to win tonight to be successful. You know, they did play on back in December, 56-48. Hoggard got the victory behind Hedera with 18, Cameron Banks with 13, Chris Gibbs with 10. And we said they're gonna be patient. Cam Blanks left open. Blanks buries it. You see Wells, they're not happy closing out to the shooter. Again, all that comes off the original offensive rebound. A category is Ashley's really got to win. Yeah, and, and why somebody just kind of walked away and didn't didn't cover a shooter on that on, on when Cam Blanks gets the ball for free. Cam yeah. Blanks would take that all day long. He's I mean, you're playing Hoggard, who probably shoots the highest percentage in this conference with open shots. So you got to make them one and done. You can't give them second chance opportunities. Yeah, you know they I mean, Blanks comes in at 41 percent from from behind the arc, and you know Hoggard's overall field goal percentage for the season is 43%. One thing I do like early, Ashley has done on a rebound is they're looking to push the ball to get it up to Potnick. I really like that in not letting Hoggard get set defensively. And Potnick's going to push it. Yeah, I mean, that's their MO, really establish their rhythm, get the game going a little fast pace. I think that's going to benefit Ashley tonight. And you get the ball in space with one of the best athletes on the court. I mean, that's a good combination for success. Mari Brown drives, and a foul on the floor. Looks like Cam Blanks is going to pick that one up. That's his first, team's first. And number 15, Luke Lamport checks in for the Vikings. Really one of the first settled pushes for Vikings or the Screaming Eagles and Jalen Conway's fouled. Fouls on Brady Rankin. Team second, first Conway on the line where he shoots 50%. Conway knocks them both home. And Evan Elliott, number 24, checking in, senior guard. A little pressure by the Screaming Eagles. Yeah, I like it. You talk about rhythm, really trying to get Hogger just out of their half court rhythm. Again, Hogger doing a good job just settling down and, and getting into the rhythm they like to establish. Hogger cold from the floor. Massey ties up Khalil Jones. That'll keep possession. This Hogger team last year with 20 and 8, 13 and 1. You know, won the conference regular season title, then lost in, in the conference championship to Laney. Great job there by Massey. You know, you might as well call that an offensive rebound because they get the possession back. And turn it over. And Hogger looking a little out of sync on their offensive end. Don, I really like the highlight Jackson Massey here. He does a lot of little things like that that don't really go on stat sheets, but really help Hogger out in so many ways. Really good dual threat inside, shoots it outside, has good footwork. I like his game a lot. 
you, know, you got to look at Massey, Hedera, Cam Blanks. You know they've been they've been on this court now for, for pretty solid three years. Yeah, and all, all playing together is something to be said for just kids playing together for three years. They get a really good rhythm together. They know how to play off one another. Blanks is off, but the foul on Conway. Actually, they called that on Lamport. This is first team's third. And Jacob Fisher into the ball game. Missing the bunnies. Ah, good pass there by Pucknett. Fisher, sophomore guard, some good time for Coach Queen. Look for Rankin here, look for a set, him coming off the screen, open for a shot here. There's the screen by Massey. Uh, Rankin gets bumped off by Evan Elliott. Good drive by Brady, can't get the fall. I really like the progression of Brady Rankin as a basketball player. You know, watched him at Myrtle Grove as a seventh grader, and then as an eighth grader, had a bit more a decent decent season. But he wasn't as uh, he wasn't the, 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 the aggressive player that he is now. He's grown a little bit, you know, but each year he's he's, he's gotten better. He's got you know what I, the, where he's really proved is not 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 from the outside but his driving to the basket. His confidence in it. Uh, his confidence in it all. I like his footwork a lot. He's patient. He lets a lot of the game come to him. Has really good balance on his shot. And, and again, like you said, he's always added something to his game. You know, that's what you want to challenge kids with in the summer is what can you add to your game now? And he shoots 92% from the free throw line. This is a lineup with Ashley here. Where does the, where does the production Steps. come from offensively? You have Pocket and Jones both out with this lineup offensively. Who's scoring for you and right who's now? Who's going to shoot the ball? And turnover on the travel. Cam Blank centers the re enters the ball game. If I'm Hoggard, I want to take advantage of this two minutes with both those kids off the floor. Fisher on a little backdoor cut. They couldn't find him. Brady wants the ball up top. Blanks drives baseline. Good and left hand. Cam Blanks with five. He's responsible for all the Hoggard scoring. Mari Brown off, Rankin with the board. Cam Blank stuff going for three. He's long. Screaming Eagles get the rebound. 70 ticks to go. Conway. Mari Brown. Mari Brown comes coming off his one of his best nights of the season. <laughs> Got a favorable call there, driving baseline. Foul on Blanks, second, fourth team foul. Jalen Conway goes to the line. Conway, a 50% free throw shooter. He's got two in the net tonight. Make that three, he's three for three. Here comes Pocknett back. Adara for the Vikings. Gibbs returning.
Conway's long on this one. Rebound at Chris Gibbs. Adair goes by Jalen Kennedy at Conway, and that's all right, boys. Whistle possession should be screaming Eagles. Screaming Eagles. Chance to hold for the last possession of the quarter. They got a two point lead. If I'm Ashley, I like the puck net matchup here with who's on him. I want to get the ball either down low or in good spacing for him to get a good high percentage look for us. Conway, Mari Brown. Got plenty of time here, 25 seconds on the clock. Brown had 13 I'm points in the last game against a win at or a loss at West Brunswick, 61-55. Brady Rankin on the board. Five ticks. Kalani Harris is not going to get a shot off. Fisher is going to get a chance for a heave. It could be go. Ooh. Fisher <laughs> almost made up for a slow quarter for the Vikings. We're knotted at seven. We're going to be back with the second quarter. Tonight's broadcast is made possible with the support of Papa John's Pizza. Better ingredients, better pizza. Don't go away, we're gonna be back in the second quarter of action right after this. So how was work? It was 1300 hours. My math class from 302 was in the trenches. Davy Roth had it the worst. Fractions were coming at him left and right. He just didn't get the damn things. Two days ago, I tried to teach him what one fourth of one half was using different sizes of blocks. Yesterday, I tried again by dividing up pizza. Both missions failed. Oh no. But today, I was ready. I created a combat math game where the only way to beat the enemy is to outfraction them. Davy conquered every last denominator. My game was so successful. The principal is deploying it to math squadrons all over the school. Anywho, how was your day? Oh, uh, today my boss treated the office to salad wraps. Hmm, <laughs> salad wraps. I know. <laughs> One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother. You, yes. your football buddy, your football buddy. You, the boss, the boss's boss. If one in three adults has prediabetes, that means it could be you, your barber, your barber's barber. Nice work. Thanks. Thanks. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker. On your left. Your cat jogger. Or you, your co pilot. Your co pilot's co pilot. While one in three adults has pre diabetes with early diagnosis, pre diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. And kind of, you know, Hodder kind of was weird on offense, didn't get really get anything going. Either team really didn't get anything going. Um, but they were able to come back and, and tie it. And, and Fisher almost canned that one from just past the half court. Yeah, slow start for both teams kind of filling each other out. Two things for me, for Ashley, especially if Massey's on him, or I think number 15 right now, that's kind of a mismatch I want to work. I want to get the ball to him, either the elbow or low, and go to work. For Hoggard, Ashley's switching ball screens. If they're doing that, I wanted it Hedera's hands right now and operating off of it, creating that mismatch. Yeah, there's nobody with the size of Massey on the court. No, I mean, you look at it, if I'm Hedera right now on the floor, especially if I'm bringing that low post to come up and set that screen, you're creating a mismatch if they're going to switch it. I would let him go to work in that. There, gets it into Fisher. He's joined by Gibbs, Lamport, and number 22, Mason Bagley, who's just returned to Coach Queen's team here. Operate, well, operate right games. there. Right. 
Good job by Double, getting it out of Hedera's hands right there. Fisher had a nice look. Here comes Pocknett. Fisher with the steal. And a left-hand finish. You know, if you're Ashley, other than the two field goals by Pocknett, I think Conway's had three foul shots. Your only field yes. goals have been Pocknett right now. Exactly. I like the matchup he has. I'm going to work in spacing right now if, I, if I'm Ashley. And screaming Eagles pick up the loose ball. Everybody's standing around. Nice play by Bagley. Hedera is fouled up by the top of Key. Fouls on Mari Brown. That's his first, team's first. That's where, for me on Ashley, they really struggle with not having a point guard to get that ball in pocket right there down low. Right. It's got to go to him. And then, you know, a team like Hoggard who has multiple point guards. Correct. Hedera, good look. Harris with the board. Conway guard by Bagley. Jacob Fisher drives. Got Lamport underneath up with the reverse. Luke Lamport on the board. He's got two. Hoggard out on a 4 nothing run the first two minutes in the second quarter. Good start for them. And again, poor spacing. Yeah, you just said it. There's no spacing for him to operate right there. And the ball's going to still stay with the Screaming Eagles. Check you back into the ball game, Khalil Jones, and then Jackson Massey for the Vikings. Now this is a, a little different matchup there when Pocknett's being covered by Massey. Yeah, but again, that's the matchup I want to go to because if I can get it down low, I want to get Massey in foul trouble, or I right, would at least attempt right. it. I think for Pocknett, I, I like the high elbow. If you watch him, he catches and instantly dribbles. He needs to hold that ball and let it let it break down. Yeah, and that was a nice job by Xavier Murphy. On the backside rebound, getting the putback. Timeout, Coach Gullage. You know, Hogger comes out and spreads out scoring a little bit. Three other players in the scoring column uh, here in the second quarter. And then again, you know, we're still looking at Pocknett's two buckets in the first two couple possessions of the first quarter and then the three free throws for Jalen Conway for the Screaming Eagles. And, you know, Coach Gullage has, has got to be trying to devise some sort of offensive flow. It's, it's just not there. And no, it doesn't, no one on the uh, Hogger, or excuse me, the Ashley offense. Looks like that they want to try to score the basketball, except Mikel Pocknett and Jalen Conway seems to see, you know, want to try to at least go create some penetration and is afraid to, to shoot the ball. But somebody else, Khalil Jones, uh, Mari Brown, they've, they've all been decent scorers, but they, they, have to, they have to attack the basket. Yeah, and great timeout by Wells. He knows that. He's going to get it together here and make some adjustments. With Hoggard, you've got to make those adjustments because you can't let him get comfortable in a rhythm. The kids you just mentioned, like Conway, I like him opposite side three-point line because if you give Pocket the ball in spacing, they've got to adjust and then that shot then the kick, open. the kick for him because he does have a nice three-point shot. You know, you put their best shooter across from Pocket, you allow them not to help as much. But again, just slowing it down, catching the ball and seeing what you have, and making Hoggard adjust defensively. There's another travel. Byers is shuffling his feet. Conway will check back in. Great defense by Hogger there. They recognize Potnick in the corner. They're going at everybody else, speeding them up. Yeah. 
Xavier Murphy back down to Jack. Good look in, good pass, great set for Hoggard there. Again, Hoggard's in a rhythm right now. You gotta get him out of that rhythm. Yeah, and, and there's not anybody really on the court for Screaming Eagles that's gonna stop Jackson Massey down that low. Two turnovers back to back there for Ashley. And now an eight point lead, Quincy Robinson checking in for the Screaming Eagles. Look for Hogger to go right back to that similar high-low action. See if Ashley can make an adjustment on how they guard it. Jacob Fisher. Rankin has Fisher in the corner, and there's good patience. Great patience, get it back out, the same look. Step back. Murphy with good position. And Xavier Murphy just used that wide body, box out, and gets himself a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, again, offensive rebound. That is something they can't lose this game or they're not going to have a shot. And that's Kalani Harris's first, only the second team foul in the Screaming Eagles. Xavier Murphy. You know, <laughs> I, he doesn't play, he doesn't, uh, Get that much time. He, he's, uh, he doesn't, he's not even on my scoring, scoring hey, list. Hey, great job by him getting himself available, boxing out wide. I mean, Murphy's played in 11 games. He's only played five minutes a game. Another offensive rebound there by Rankin, just out hustling for the ball. He missed both free throws. Again, Pocknett not, not in the lineup. Where does the scoring come from from Ashley here? I haven't seen Khalil Jones really touch the basketball. Yeah, and and he's who I highlighted at the beginning of the game. He's got to have a good game tonight. And he's fouled. It's about the first or second time we've seen him touch it tonight, I believe. And that was Hedera on the foul. But, yeah, I mean, Khalil Jones, is you know, he's, he's led them in scoring a few different times. and You know, he's a good athlete. You know, getting the ball in some space. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, it he's their second leading scorer, second best athlete, and here we are, four minutes into halftime, and that's the first I've seen him touch the ball. And he's Not big. a good sign. Vanport returns for the Vikings. 40% from the free throw line is Khalil Jones. He's a kid you almost want to work to your first two, three possessions of the game just to get his flow going, get his energy going. Basketball is such a rhythm game. See if they get him started here with two free throws. Now they pressure. Hoggart's a tough team to pressure with all the ball handlers they have. Again, look for patience here from Hoggard. Massey looking to post up in the middle on Mari Brown. Vanport keeps it alive. Another offensive rebound. Had Massey open on that curl, too. Luke now has four right out of his season average. Quincy Robinson. You know, we're still with almost a half a basketball played. Only two field goals for the Screaming Eagles. Both by Pocknett. Yes, in the first two two minutes of the, of the first quarter. Not a good stat for them starting out the first half for sure. Tamel Miguel, number five, enters the ball game. Lamport's trying to post up Miguel. Rankin right down the middle, contact. He's gonna shoot two. And that does go on Demel Miguel. Brady Rankin, as I said earlier, he shoots 92% from the free throw line. And Hogger comes in shooting 75% as a team. You know, that's not somewhere where you want to put him. 
Yeah, they're the highest field goal percentage shooting team in this conference, I believe, Don. And like, like I said, offensive rebounds, you can't give them any second chance points. They've had a lot of them in this first half. And Brady's got four. And you certainly can't put Rankin on the line. He's automatic there. Robbie Helmus, number 10, has entered the ball game for the Screaming Eagles. Stolen by Bagley. He's got Fisher with him and Rankin. Bagley can't get the finger roll, but Fisher gets the hoop in the harm. Another offensive rebound. They called that on Quincy Robinson. It's his first, team's fourth. 2.30 to go in the quarter, Don. We've got a 15 to two quarter going so far here in the second quarter. Hoggard. Miguel Lamport with another board. Hanging, contact. Mari Brown the other way. Pockman has been on the bench for a while. That's time Demel Miguel with the pump fake gets Hedera up in the air and draws the foul. How many fouls you got Pockman for, Don? I have Pockman for no fouls. No fouls. And here he comes off the bench. If I say hard to keep him out right now, two minutes down 22 to nine when he's the only one had a field goal for you. And Hoggart subs Massey in the ball game again. And Pockman does come to the scorer's table. 0 for two. And lane violation. Press again by the Screaming Eagles. Sophomore Fisher. To the junior Rankin to the senior Massey. Over to the sophomore Mason Bagley. And then Brady Rankin drops back and knocks down a tray. Pocknett gets his own rebound, doesn't get the fall. He's going to shoot two. Bat. Foul was on Luke Lamport. Seventh team foul. Pocknett a 50% free throw shooter. In and out, Khalil Jones will check in. Chris Gibbs comes in for Coach Queen. And Mikel Pockmet still the only person to score a field goal for the Screaming Eagles. See if he can add a free throw there, but he's wide left. 80 ticks to go. Massey Bagley for three, short. Rebound, loose ball run down by Khalil Jones. Khalil Jones is pushed out of bounds by Mason Bagley. Like the hustle there by Rankin trying to go for it. Here they are up 25 to nine and he's out working everybody for the basketball. And you know, here we're still, Hoggart still, or Ashley still just, you know, two field goals, and, you know, we're shooting free throws, but we got to make the free throws too. Correct, and haven't had a field goal this whole quarter. Keep it alive. Stripped by Gibbs. Gibbs gets on the floor, all same possession. Good job by the refs jumping in there quickly.
65 seconds remaining. Got to get a ball in. Mari Brown, Potnick, Potnick trying to take Jackson Massey and a travel. I mean, Pockman's trying to go against Massey. He's getting quickly doubled, and there's got to be somebody else open. Yeah, well, you know, one thing with Pockman I'd like to see a lot is if you watch him when he first catches, he instantly dribbles. He's wasting his dribble when he's doing that. He's, and it's a praise to him. He's such an athlete with his footwork. He doesn't need to just catch and dribble. Yeah, he can survey court, put himself in a triple threat position. Shout out to uh, Kobe Bryant on that, Don. The best I've seen in the world with footwork. Yes, it's, you know, we talked about you know, locally shocking things and national shocking as well, the, the death of uh, serviceman Antonio Moore. But a lot of people are shocked by the nine folks who perished in the helicopter crash. Those being the most shocked about is, it was the Mamba. Just such a tragic event. Really shows you how sweet and precious life is and remind you to say I love you to your loved ones and, and never leave grudges and, and realize how most things we think about aren't serious at all, you know? Uh, that's exactly true. Chris Gibbs is on the scoring board. 30 seconds to go. Rankin tries to go for the rip. Lonnie Harris hangs you know, off of Gibbs. And that's where Pocknett, too, you know, it's a praise to him. He's a sophomore. I think he'll grow his game in that area. When you're an athlete, one of the worst things you can do is just catch and dribble. Because when you need that first step, use it, and you're going to beat most people one-on-one, -on -one, especially at the high school level. And, yeah, I like to see him develop the jumper a little bit. Most of the stuff you see him is going towards the basket. Yeah, for sure. You know, footwork and developing that shot will open his game up a lot. Right now, I think you can play two or three feet off him right there like you see Massey doing. Inside to Khalil Jones, but he's held by Bagley. That was a perfect example. If that shot right there was a threat, Massey's got to come out on him, and it really opens up his game so much. And Hoggart in the, he's got Screaming Eagles in the bonus. Cleo Jones at 50 percent. Jones converts. You know, today I was reading with quite a few kids, and you know, they they asked if they could read something different than what they usually read, and they want they they of course want to read something about Kobe. And you know, the, the thing I was trying to nail home with them is, you know, there there is very the. Michael Jordan, is, it's hard to say anybody was ever more of a fierce competitor than Michael Jordan, but if there was, it was Kobe Bryant. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what I love about Kobe is just that work ethic and just attention to detail. Great example for young kids we work with, especially middle school and elementary level, because you don't, you know, to be extraordinary or great at something, just master the basics and work on them every single day, and Kobe certainly lived by that example. Yeah, and his deer basketball, you know, video, if you've never seen it, you should watch it because you could tell his, his commitment to being, uh, from a six-year-old boy, uh, to being a Laker and, and, and to doing what he could do and everything he could do for basketball. Oh, absolutely, and that's just his passion. You know, you get great at something when you truly love it. Blanks got to put a fork in it, and Pockman's shot falls short. 27 to 11, the Screaming Eagles trail the home team Vikings, and you know, they still only have two field goals in, in, in 16 minutes. 16 minutes of basketball. We'll be back with some halftime analysis in a few minutes. Join us while we thank our sponsor, Papa John's Pizza. Better ingredients, better pizza. Web and Don will be back.
As farmers and ranchers, stewardship of the land comes naturally. You leave it better than you found it, so future generations can enjoy a way of life that you love. Thanks to your efforts, we're fortunate to experience clean water, abundant wildlife, and healthy rural communities. Your work is vital, and its benefits extend far beyond your property, reaching millions of other Americans who depend on this region every day without even realizing it. You take care of the land because it's the right thing to do. But did you know that conservation can also improve your bottom line? Take a moment and find out how conservation pays. Visit conservationpays.org. I'm a bus driver. I'm a bus driver. I'm a bus driver. Wouldn't, Wouldn't you, you like, like to, to be a bus, bus driver, driver too? too? New Hanover County Schools is now hiring individuals to be a part of our elite core of school bus drivers. That's right. You can work full-time, part-time, or serve as a substitute bus driver. New Hanover County Schools offers competitive wages, flexible hours, and state benefits. Best of all, you get to work with the greatest kids in the world. We need you! Contact us today to join the next free commercial driver's license class. New Hanover County Schools is an equal opportunity employer. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um. Jessica. Will you go to prom with me? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Welcome back. Sheila Bowles Gymnasium. The Vikings lead 27 to 11 behind a 20 point second quarter, outscoring the Screaming Eagles 20 to 4. And the Screaming Eagles have been very cold from the floor and making a living at the, the free throw line, but just can't find any offense. Yeah, that second quarter, really nothing went well for them. Offensive rebounding, turnovers, a rhythm. Hoggard wins that quarter by 16 points, 20 to four. Really got to come out and find some kind of offense. It's really got to be pocketed and where he's getting the ball in spacing. I look for the first three or four possessions of this half to run exactly through him. They yeah, run it through him and like you said, put Jalen uh, Conway on the opposite side and try to get a shooter. Yeah, absolutely. And where they're getting him the ball, a lot of times Pocknett is catching it three feet outside the three point line. Well, then it becomes easy to guard. Let him get it at the elbow. Massey has to match up totally different guarding him at the elbow. Or put his back to the basket. That's one of those two. When he catches three feet outside the three-point line, Massey's just going to sit on the elbow. He becomes totally different to guard. Yeah, he's easy to guard because he, he doesn't have the shot from the perimeter. Correct. And you just got to establish some offense. Like you said, they've had two field goals, not a single one in the second quarter. Really, most of their points have just been on the foul line. And they have Pocknett, Brown, Conway, Harris, Jones. Blanks, Hedera, Gibbs, Massey, Rankin for the Vikings. And look for Hogger to come out doing a lot of the same. You know, until they stop it or make an adjustment, they're going to go with what's working. Be patient, running through sets, create spacing. There you go, good movement. And Hoggard's led by Brady Rankin with seven. Fisher and Cam Blanks both have five apiece. And Conway and Pocknett are leading scores at four apiece for the Screaming Eagles. Chris Gibbs fouled. You know, one thing playing Hoggard that at least I've always found worked well with their guards is you gotta, you got to have the confidence to get up in them and guard them at the guard spots and play in the passing lane. Really make the tempo up, not let them comfortable dribbling. When you play two feet off them from the guard spot, they can really run anything they want to do. Yeah, you, you force them to pass, you know, force them to dribble. And but if you let them sit there and pass the ball and move the ball, yeah, it, yeah, you, know, you got to play in passing lanes. You got to play up right in his face. You know, when Rankin crosses half court, someone should be right on him with confidence to guard him. Gibbs converts both free throws. Again, this year with some personnel, easier said than done because Hoggard is very good at the guard spot this year. 
And again, like you said, mentioned, Don, those guys have played three three years together now, so you know they, they've got a rhythm going. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and the Brett Queef and Brett Queen's offensive scheme has always been running through the guards. Absolutely. Like I said, right when he crosses half, you got to have somebody to guard it and play in the passing lanes. Really get them out of the spots they're used to running to. When they can run right to their spots and run their offense, you're in trouble. Yeah, and the Eagles did cause a turnover on that last possession. See if they can capitalize on the O. I talked about Pockner here. Look for the ball to go through him. Got to get it down lower at the elbow, get him the ball. And there he is out behind the arc again. And then he's quickly doubled. Gets his own rebound. Gets the put back, our first field goal since the first quarter for the Screaming Eagles. Blanks. Again, right there, you see how far they're playing off, off him. You can't play five feet off their guards. Yeah, Chris Gibbs. After his first try, gets his own rebound and put back. Gives him a six now. Now get it to him at the elbow. That's where he needs it. He needs to turn and do a reverse pivot and face the basket right at the elbow with the ball. Um, Mari Brown's going to get chance to shoot some free throws. Chris Gibbs gets called for the foul. Amari Brown averages three on the season. He's their leading score the other night in a loss with 13. But those are his first points of the night. Short on that one. Hedera with the rebound is coming the other way. Tries to throw a unwarranted. Uh, and the coach Queen did not like that pass. No, not at all. I'm about to say, if Rankin called that one, I was really going to praise his game. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you're five feet off one of the best shooters on the floor right there. Not a bad look. Back the other way, Conway pulls up from just inside the arc. He's short, Pocknett with the rebound and the putback. Pocknett now with eight. And the ball hits the sideline. Coach Queen, substitution. Lamport checks in for Gibbs. It's a great substitution there by Queen. You know, that kid will recognize that next time and fix that going in. Yeah, he just kind of got lazy with the pass. Yeah, absolutely. Just small attention to detail. Again, you see Ashley kind of in that 1-4 set coming down, yet Potnick gets off the elbow. Thinks about the three. And over the back on Kalani Harris. That's Harris's second, team second. Hoggart maintains 15 point lead. Loose ball picked up by Pocknett, come the other way. And the foul is going to go on Cameron Blanks. It's his third. Oh, that's team an interesting second. call. I thought Blanks had possession of the ball. In the so did game. I. Is he, I thought he you got up Queen underneath. Yeah, he, he had the ball. Well, Ashley needed something to go their way. They got to take advantage of it here. Good job fronting by Massey there, not letting it go in. But they collapse on Pocknett. Got to move the ball. Conway, he's fouled by Lamport. It's his third, team's third.
Conway, his first look at three. Hoggart, very patient, slows it right down. Brady Rankin likes the shot. Ramport picks up a loose ball, but Khalil Jones finds one. Get in the middle. Ooh, Tough a little catch. bit too much. Bagley and Fisher set to return for Hedera and Rankin. Yeah, contributors from this Hogger team last year, really Danny Morrison and then uh, sophomore Trey Klukas are, are no longer with the program. Morrison graduated. Klukas is now in a, in a full-time baseball program. Is he? Who's he playing for, Don? You know? He's 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 in a uh, program up uh, up out of Raleigh, the travel team that plays basically on, on a, a large regional standpoint. See so yeah, Ashley with the big substitution again. Interesting lineup they have on the floor. You know, as much as I'm highlighting things on Pocknett, this is where, again, them not having strong guards and a point guard really hurts Pocknett because no one's taking control of the offense and really getting him the ball where he needs to be. It doesn't open the court up at all. No, no, you can clear the elbow out, get it to him. You can clear the block, get it to him. No one can really take control and do that. Coleman Lamondola finds Brian Byers. Byers is on the scoreboard. Side to Massey, good catch. Then the goal tries to split the players. And give the foul to Fisher. That's four on the Vikes. To me right now, with three minutes to go in this quarter, Hogger with a big lead, especially the lineup Ashley has. How good of a Hogger team is this? Can they put this game away, or do they get sloppy and just allow it to be like it is right now? <laughs> Justin Thomason has something to say about it. He gets himself a little running hook. He's got two. Pulls it to a, within 11. Bagley for three, and he gets the bounce. Mason Bagley, and only his fifth game this season. He's been a contributor. Helmus to Lamandola. Lamandola pulls up on his dribble. Evan Elliott. Lamport with the steal. And Lamport. And the end one. He's got six and a good chance to make it seven. Evan Elliott picked up the foul. It's only the third team foul in the Screaming Eagles. Going for it with the roll. Xavier Murphy checks in for Massey. Really like Massey there. You look at that. The screen's talking. He's stopping his body and looking right at him in his eyes. Seems like a great kid to coach. Does a lot of little things well for that team. Thomason coming off the bench, getting hot. Fisher with a nice lay. Sophomore Jacob Fisher's got a nice game as well.
Bagley got caught up in the air. 45 to go. Fires, fades. And loose ball foul on the Screaming Eagles. That went on. Elliott. Pressure by the Screaming Eagles now. And now Byers fouls Xavier Murphy. That's five team fouls. Byers' first foul. Screaming Eagles trying to get something going defensively, trying to get a stop. And back and extended that lead to 17. Uh, no communication on a simple screen. Lamport. Lamport's got nine, doubling his season average. The left hand lay, Brian Byers. And that's a 41 24. We go to the fourth quarter. Screaming Eagles still down uh, 17 points. And definitely had a little bit better offensive production that third quarter. We're going to be back with the fourth quarter. Tonight's broadcast made Spock possible with the support of Papa John's Pizza. Better ingredients, better pizza. Some kids never smile. They're embarrassed by their crooked teeth. They want braces like the other kids, but their families can't afford them. Some may even try to straighten their teeth themselves. That can make everything worse. Luckily, there's Donated Orthodontic Services, a program from the American Association of Orthodontists. It helps provide orthodontic treatment to kids and teens whose families can't afford it. For kids who apply, are approved, and are matched with a volunteer orthodontist, it can be life-changing. Their treatment is in the hands of an expert, a licensed local orthodontic specialist who improves their smiles by correctly aligning teeth and jaws. Some kids think they'll never smile again, but donated orthodontic services may help them smile with confidence. To link to the application and eligibility requirements, visit aaoinfo.org. Hello. Hi. I'm from Blue Hood Stone Barns. We brought a meal for you and I'm here to serve it to you. Okay, great. Come in. Zucchini carbonara, made from zucchini that was harvested earlier this morning. Again? Oh. <laughs> hey, Dan Barber. You have room for a little bit more? <laughs> come yeah, on come in. Come on in. Brochettes, the sausage. So when we made that zucchini carbonara, you know, they're the end pieces of the zucchini and they're the cores that we cut away. Not to mention zucchini flour. Usually those get thrown out. We use them to create an entire second dish. Does that, oh. Again? Uh. I'm here to bring you your third course. It's the vines from your zucchini. We'll have a little zucchini stem pasta. A different experience of zucchini. When we start to think differently about our food, we can get a lot more out of it. This is delicious. What do you think we can make out of this? 40% of food in America is never eaten. Cook it, store it, share it. Visit savethefood.com. And the Vikings lead here at home, 41-24. And Webb, as you said, we're there towards the third end of the third. You know, with the, the cast, of the crew that the Screaming Eagles had, I don't think you know Vikings really had a chance to kind of put this one away. You know, they got it as close to as to 11, and then it quickly went right back up. Uh, to 19 and 17 points. Yeah, that's what I was watching. You know, I know this Hogger team is top of the conference, a pretty good team. How, how, how can they put teams away? They really didn't do that there. And a praise to Ashley, their bench provided the best offensive possessions they've had all night long. Yeah, that was a 14-13 quarter. You know, and, and it was, a, a Screaming Eagles had the offense going on in the first 
few minutes of the third quarter, but then, you know, it's just kind of went away, and then we've got different personnel. It seems like he's keeping with Lamondola, Thomason, Elliott, Byers, and Helmus. Vikings counter with Rankin, Gibbs, Massey, Hedera, and B Banks. You see Hoggers all starting five back on the floor. Let's see if they can kind of put it away now. And Byers has been going to the hole strong. He's got six points. He's fouled. And Hedera picks up his third. Team foul number five. Myers keeping them in it. Remind you of upcoming telecast on Friday night. We'll be at Brogdon Hall, where the Buccaneers from Laney High School visit the New Hanover Wildcats. Girls game start at 6. Boys to be immediately following around 7.30. Yeah, that should be a good one Friday, Don. Two boys game, two very up-tempo teams. Style-wise, very similar. Big game for Laney, really needing a win to stay in the thick of things at the top of the uh, conference. And, and same goes for Hanover. You know, Hanover, Hanover can't afford a loss. Yeah, they drop that one to West, which kind of opens the door right back for Hoggard to finish out here. And we'll cover that Hoggard-Hanover game on February 13th from Brogdon Hall. They're uh, going to the bank. Not sure if he was trying to bank that one or not there, Don. And it worked, though. Yeah, that's Hedera's first first <laughs> points of the game. Is it really? Yeah, you know, Hedera comes in averaging 10. If, if you would have told me that was his first points in the fourth quarter and the score was what it was, I almost wouldn't have believed you, Don. Yeah, 19-point lead. Just shows how well everything's went in Hoggard's favor this whole game. And, again, what I talked about, just establishing a rhythm. Hoggard's done that all game. Brady Rankin will, gets fouled. Lamondola. Brady was going to flush that one. Heard he had a couple uh, surprising dunks in the last Hanover game. Is that right? Yes. There he gets the roll. You talk about rhythm. You watch him at the foul line. You know, you said 92%, Don. He just has that same rhythm. Does the same thing every time. Same balance, same body, automatic. And he's four for four from the stripe. He's got nine points overall. <laughs> Helmus gets doubled. Stolen by Banks. Got Rankin running with them. Brady Rankin with the flush. There it is. Got him one. Helmus drives, rebound Chris Gibbs. He's going to see on that flush, I'd almost call a timeout there by Ashley. Forget about the scoreboard. Who on my team is just going to fight and compete? It's Elliott with Ramondolo. Ramondolo gets the layup, his first bucket. 44 is fighting, guarding full court. I like it. Hedera, hesitation, drives, fouled by Byers. He will shoot two. Hedera shoots 78%. So Hoggers, three primary ball handlers, Hedera, Blanks, and Brady Rankin. You know, 78, the low is, is, is Hedera, 82% is Blanks, and then 92% is Rankin. And Sebastian Hedera now with four. Ninety-two is pretty good, Don. Yeah. There's been some good shooters throughout the years here, but uh, that's got to be up near the top. Yeah, oh yeah, and it's—I mean—and he shot free throws. It's—it's it's not like he's shot ten. 
Oh, yeah, he gets himself there. That's a pretty good percentage. I know we had a couple players years ago, Joe King and Oliver Holmes, that were right in that range, but that, that's got to be near the top. Joe King, UNCW, Oliver Holmes, UNC Asheville. Two Division I level players could shoot it well. He's, he's 57 for 62 coming into this game. He's four for four tonight. So he's 61 for 60, uh, 66. Air ball for Quincy Robinson. Ball knocked out of Hedera's hands. Go the other way with number 34, Blake Lewis into the ball game, sophomore point guard. And that's Blake Lewis knocking home a three. Also into the ball game is Malachi Chapman, number 40 for the Screaming Eagles. And Gibbs is fouled. Coach Queen about to clear the bench. Foul went against Demel Miguel. Hoggart's in the bonus. Substitutes into the ball game. Fisher, number 21, is returning with number 20, Jackson Spires, along with number 13, Davion Serrett, number 22, Mason Bagley. Murphy will wait at the scorer's table to take the shooter's place. Gibbs gets a rest. Gibbs comes out with 10 points on the night. You know, Webb, it's, it's, it's sort of tough. You know, um, who would you pick for the Webb and Don player to gain? Hoggart spread it around so much. Yeah, early I thought Blanks had a good game. I thought Rankin overall had, had a solid performance. Helmus just goes onto the boards. Mm. Yeah, you're ranking with 11. Fisher finished with seven. Chris Gibbs is the leading scorer on my uh, scorecard. Still maintain that 19 point lead. This is stayed with the Screaming Eagles. So Malachi Chapman triggers the inbounds. Robinson to Lewis. Good pass. Good pass again. Finish. Uh, and the tap up and in. Jamel Miguel. Good hustle by Robinson. Both boys <coughs> leaving it all on the floor. Two thirty-seven to go from Sheila Bowles Gymnasium. The Vikings should rise to fifteen and four, eight and one. Jackson Spires tries to hit the three. Blake Lewis launches for three.
That's number 13, Davion Serrett. Robbie Helmus, another three-pointer. Praise Ashley's bench. They've had more offensive production field goal-wise than the starters. Than the starters, have, right? they certainly have. <laughs> Might start them next game. 130. And a shout out to Wells Gulledge. You know, he's just always up coaching his kids. Regardless of the score, he's coaching his kids up. Good coachable moments for young kids that usually aren't on the floor at this time of the game. And, and you know, this this is what he's got to do, especially, you know, it's not like, you know, a three and five in the conference. You, 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 you just you got to get kids in the game, kids with more, get some experience. You got to get them experience. Get them in the games, get them experience, show them film, get them better. You got, you got to grow the team like that. A lot of that, again, goes back to guard play. His, his bench guards have played with more energy than his starting guards tonight. There, there we go. The pressure's working. Interesting you see Hedera check back in the game. I think Queen just wanted somebody on the floor to kind of hold the ball and run out some of the clock and finish it out here. Great coachable moments for both teams after this game to highlight, and I know both coaches will. For Ashley, just getting better, getting a minutes. For Hoggard, I know Queen's going to talk about putting games away. That third quarter there, they really should have came out and just put it away and really didn't do that. Just kind of played sloppy to it a little bit. He was able to get his his bench in, but you know, it ends up right now at 14. You know, but what I like from Hoggard is it, you have nine players scoring. Yeah, you've got scoring spread out and, and again, rhythm. Hoggins really played their style all night long. And when they get in the half court and they, they get in their rhythm, they're a very good team. Jackson Spires gets a big crowd applause for knocking down the three. And Helmus is fouled. Robbie Helmus is stuck in there and fought. Helmus, the junior. And that finishes it. Hoggart gets the victory, 14 and four. I'm imagining Hot Hanover took care of Topsel tonight. And that should be put uh, both teams at eight and one. And we'll see what happens with the remainder of the Mid-Eastern Conference season. Wildcats next up, or excuse me, next up for the Screaming Eagles, they play West, Br or excuse me, Hoggard. It's West Brunswick this Friday, and North Brunswick is where the tr Screaming Eagles will travel to. But Webb will be back Friday night with the, with the, with the ball game down at Brogdon Hall. Look forward to it. Should be a good one. Uh, through this one's 57-42. And uh, hey, Let's just let's just give it a, a team effort for, for the Webb and Don player of the game for the Hogger Vikings. Yeah, I agree with that. You just said it had nine guys in scoring. Really all of them contributed and played their style of game, which Hogger did all night long. Great team effort, big win for them tonight moving forward. 
stay in that eight and one in the conference, right up near the top where they need to be. Should be a good one Friday at Hoggard and, Bro uh, and Brogdon Hall versus Hanover and Laney. See if Hanover kind of stays up top two. Look for a good showdown to finish out this conference with Hoggard, Hanover up top, Laney and West kind of battling right behind them. There we have it. Well, have a good night. We'll be back to on Friday night, the 31st, from Brogdon Hall and New Hanover High School. For Webb Guthrie, I'm Don Osterbo. Thanks for watching. Tonight's broadcast is made possible to support of Papa John's Pizza. Better ingredients, better pizza. Have a good night.